welcome to Chess for Knights, aka the two o'clock class. The one o'clock class did meet expectations because in one of the games, the both kids castled with their queen and the king went through the queen and it was still the best game of the class by, by far. All right, now today we're gonna look at a game that I played several weeks ago in your favorite city, exactly. Atlanta, there's no chess playing in the class. You have to watch there. You can go next door and play. Okay, this is chess class. Don't play chess. All right, also face this way. Yeah. Okay, at 2.30, you can either play chess when I'm done lecturing or you can go to the dentist. You know, 2.30, 2... No? You, you got it? Wow. I, I'm shocked. All right, nice. Okay. I could tell he got it because he was smiling to show his, you know, pearl whites. All right, so this game was played against the 2100, and in fact, when I asked him what his name was, he said a 2100. So his first name was A, and his last name was 2100. You know what his name is now after this game? His name changed. He's now a 2099. Okay, now I had the black pieces, and I have lots of funny stories about this game. Okay, first, we played my favorite opening, Sicilian. Sicilian. Okay, and unlike a lot of people, he played the open Sicilian because he was a kid, and kids like the open Sicilian. Okay, and when I have the black pieces, and it's a Sicilian, this is usually the position that I get. This is called the classical variation, so named by John Nunn. And in this position, there's two very common moves for white at the grandmaster level. What are those common moves? Raise your hand. Let's call in a random student, Arjun. Bishop G5 is correct. Uh, Bishop G5 is correct. Bishop E2 is probably the third most common move. So more common than Bishop E2. Bishop G5, I agree. That's the rouser variation. And the other move, which was a favorite of Fisher, also named after Fisher at some point, uh, you. Bishop B5 is a move, probably the fifth most common move. Arjun, which move is that? Bishop C4. Okay, and I probably face Bishop G5 more often, but my opponent played Bishop C4. Okay, and I used to play E6, and then I played Queen B6, and now I play E6 again, confusing even myself. Okay, so I played E6, and... He played the Velimirovich attack, which is where White Castle's queen side. And if we go back, when Bobby Fischer played the Sozin, he would castle king side, and then he would play for f4, f5, attacking the e6 pawn a million times. Okay, but the Velimirovich attack is probably more common now, and that's where White Castle's queen side and tries to checkmate black. It's not very nice. And in fact, I've had this position many times. And if you open a chess book, or if you go to a computer and say, hey, what's the most common move here? The answer is queen c7. Queen c7 gets off the rook's file, so the guy never takes your queen. And if you want to play b5 and checkmate your opponent, b5 is risky now. Why is b5 risky? You. Because um, it could be attacked multiple times. The B5 pawn is attacked multiple times. That's correct. However, there's a more dangerous answer. Uh, random student, Arjun. The knight on C6 is hanging, so you'd lose a knight. So if black plays queen C7, he defends his knight. Okay, so that's the most common move. Now, in 1995, I was on an airplane, and we were flying from Detroit to Los Angeles. I was trying to figure out which city was worse and more dangerous. I still haven't figured it out. Anyway, on the plane, I had a hardcover book that was written in descriptive notation, okay? And only my older viewers at home know what descriptive notation is. That's like, instead of writing E4 and C5, you write pawn to king four, and pawn to queen bishop four. Right, no talking. Okay. And I had a book that was written in the 1970s by British chess players. Talk about a misnomer. Okay, if you ever want to know what an oxymoron is, 
Somebody say British chess players, and then the perfect. Okay, and uh, in the book, when I opened it up, there was a diagram, and the diagram had the queen on, on king one, or as we would say, e8. And I thought the diagram had a typo, like it was a mistake. The queen should be on d8, but they made the diagram wrong. And then I looked, and the last move was queen e8. And I was like, oh. So queen e8 is actually the move that was played. This was invented by your favorite grandmaster, Alexander Belyovsky. If only you could see their faces at home. Arjun, have you heard of Belyovsky? You're, you're my only hope. Yeah, maybe. Now, there's a funny story about Belyovsky. If you come to the chess club and you're a strong grandmaster, you will definitely be recognized by the front desk workers. Okay? And for the Singfield Cup, the second Singfield Cup, I believe, possibly the third, we had Maxime Vachier Le Grave, and his second was Alexander Belyovsky, who was one of the top 10 players in the world for 20 years. But now he's in his 60s, so now he's not. And Belyovsky went to the front desk, and they said, can we help you? Do you want to join the club? Okay, because they don't know who that is. Okay, uh, they also asked that of Carlson and Anon. Who, who are you? Okay, now some of the front desk workers know who Belyovsky is, but not really. Okay. Anyway, Belyovsky invented the move Queenie 8 in 1973. And there's a very famous saying in chess. What's old and forgotten is once new again. What? Okay. So if you do something that was popular 30, 40 years ago, everybody forgot about it. So now I play it, and they're like, huh, what's that move? And then I crush them. And this is a good example. So I played queen e8, and my opponent was like, what? Okay. Now, queen e8 is a very interesting move, because the queen on e8 defends my knight. So now when I play b5, my knight's defended. Also, when I play all these moves, my queen is defending the a4 pawn, which actually happens later. And in some positions, white plays queen h5 and tries to checkmate me. Then sometimes my queen on e8 can take his queen when I move my f pawn. And that didn't happen this game because my opponent was too busy getting checkmated for him to checkmate me. He was like... Should I checkmate my opponent or should I let him checkmate me? Then he looked at the notation sheet and saw my rating and saw his rating and he did the right thing. Okay. So he made a mistake almost every move now because he didn't know the move queen e8. Now, I gave lectures on this before, but you were all asleep at the time. The lectures were on opposite side castling. I castle one way and they castle the other way. Then we checkmate each other. Then the class goes, yay, it's not a boring endgame, it's checkmate. Okay, and you'll see that this game. So normally, white starts pushing all of his kingside pawns and tries to checkmate me. And I push all my queenside pawns and try to checkmate him. And at least half of that happened. The other half didn't happen. So my opponent played king b1. That doesn't really threaten my king very much, does it? Okay, knight played b4, and already I'm threatening something. Notice, if I take his pawn, he'll take my knight. So should I do that? No. no. But if I attack his knight, and then his knight moves away, then I'll take his pawn. Yeah? Yeah. So he defended his pawn. Okay. And I developed my bishop. And he was like, Hmm, if I make a nothing move, like here, don't do that. Okay. Then I'll attack his knight, and since he played king b1, he can't put his knight there. Where can he put his knight? Um, a4. a4. Remember when I played queen e8 defending a4, and you all laughed at me? Now I take his knight, he takes my knight, and I got two guys on his knight, and he's got one guy defending it. So I win a knight. Hey. Did my opponent lose a knight like that? No, because of his name, a 2100, not an 1100. Then he would have lost his knight. Okay, so my opponent was like, hmm, this move might win a piece. I need a square for my knight. So he played queen f2. Now, if I attack his knight, he has a square for his knight. 
You see how that works? Okay. Now, the last few moves, has my opponent been checkmating me? No. no. As we say in India, he's doing Vishwa nothing, right? India. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Okay. So I took his knight, but I had a good reason. In fact, you told me the reason earlier. Thank you. You said if you play b5, the b5 pawn is attacked a lot. That's right. And I wanted to play a5, a4, and win his bishop. But if I play a5, he'll take my b pawn and I'll cry. So I traded knights, and then I played a5. I don't think he's taking my b pawn now. Right? You agree? Now, I want to play a4 next move, and his bishop is trapped. So what did he do about it? Nothing. You with the right answer. Hey, that was the right answer. He played pawn a3. Now, if my queen was on c7, which is the main line, the queen's on c7, then he could play a4. But he can't play a4 here because I have all these guys. I have a lot of guys on a4. So he played a3, and I played b4 attacking his knight, and we traded. And where did his knight go? What's the only safe square? F4. You. Um, e2. E2. That was better than my answer because he has two safe squares, a2 and e2. e2 is okay, but he played a2. The reason was if he plays knight e2, then the whole file is open to his king. So I would somehow get my queen to a1, and then he would get checkmated. So he blocked the A file with knight A2. I wanted to get my queen over there, but I can't jump over my bishop. If I was Magnus Carlsen, I could, but I'm not that high rated yet. So I was thinking maybe I'll play bishop A4, and then my queen will go over there. And that's not a bad move. But I attacked his bishop, and he saw it. And then I played bishop E6, and now my queen can go to A4 later. Hooray. I have a question. Who has a better attack on the king? Black has an attack or white has an attack? Black. Has an attack. Black. Is, is white doing a lot of attacking? No. No. no what? Nothing. Black Horrible. Black. Okay. Now, he didn't want me to take his bishop and mess his pawns up, so he played knight c1. Okay. And I was like, wow, my rook on f8, that's doing a good job attacking his king. Totally. No. 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 And I was thinking... Wow, I could get a lot of pieces on the A file, like my queen and my rook, and then he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't like that, would he? So I played rook to A6, and I thought I'll play queen to A8, and then I'll play rook A1 checkmate. That, that seems good for black, right? And if I don't do that, my queen could go somewhere else, and then my other rook could go to A8 with the same idea. So I played rook A6. He traded bishops, and now my rook actually is opposite his queen, so he was worried about knight takes e4. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so he played queen e2, attacking my rook. Wow, every move he makes is attacking my king. I know. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah. and I played queen a4, defending my rook. What else does queen a4 do? Yes. Yeah, queen a1 checkmate. My opponent, since his name was a2100, didn't want to get checkmated. It's true. So what move did he make to stop queen a1 checkmate? Pawn c3. Yeah, that stops checkmate, pawn c3. Then I would probably play pawn b3, and then his name would be changing very soon to a 2099. Because I don't see how you stop me. I guess you could take this because my rook is hanging. C3 was genius. Okay, so B3 is good and taking is good. Everything is good. He actually stopped my queen from going to A1 by defending A1. Huh? Selena. Knight B3. Did I, did I play queen A1 anyway? No, then he would take it. Now, kids like to check their opponents. So they would go here, then he would move away, then they'd be like, oh well, okay. So 
When your opponent wants to run away, that means you don't want him to run away. Think about that. So if my opponent's king was on g1, I wouldn't really have an attack against his king. But if his king is on b1, okay. So I want to make sure he never runs away. Okay, now remember earlier in the game, I was complaining that my rook was a little silly. So I played rook c8, and the reason I played rook c8 was that if his king runs away, then he would have to cry a lot. He can't take my queen, and if he takes my rook, I have checkmate. And not only is it checkmate, I used to have a shirt that said queen c2 exclamation mark as I put that shirt on. Even though I had it when I was 14, it would still fit. Okay. So my opponent didn't run his king away. If my opponent does nothing, like here, then I check. He makes the only legal move, and then I do that thing I just showed you. Yay. Okay. Now, my opponent didn't want to lose his knight because he's a 2100. But if he moves his knight somewhere, I'll play queen a1 main. So what did he do? Yeah, in the back. Um, he protected his uh, knight. That's exactly what he did. And he has two ways to do it. Rook to d3. And queen to d3. And he played the one you said, rook to d3. All right. So my rook's doing a good job. My queen and rook are doing a good job. Over here is just sort of chilling out. I'm not really doing anything over there. Okay, so in the Sicilian, it's said many times that black wants to make this move. Man, can I make this move now? It's protected a million times. You, D5. And usually you don't have another pawn. Okay, now a lot of kids cry a lot, like you, and you're like, I don't like double pawns. You start crying, okay? Double pawns in the center are pretty good because then you can start moving all your center pawns. Yay. And this E pawn's really good because I control D5. So D5. Okay, now I have a very complicated plan which is too hard for this class. So no crying. It's way too hard for you at home. Maybe like if Gustafsson is watching, maybe. But he's a German grandmaster, so. Okay, I mean, he's not a, not a British grandmaster, but even so. Okay, so let's play a nothing move for white. Now I'm going to show you my plan. Attack his bishop. He can't go back because checkmate. So he'll go somewhere else. Let's go here. I don't know. And then I was going to play rook c3. Let's say he takes my rook. And I take his pawn. Now, if he plays king here to run away then that would be checkmate. And if he doesn't play king b1, I'm going to play queen here check and then play the checkmate. I don't really see a good way for white to stop that plan. I think white's king is in a lot of trouble because his king can't really escape. My pawn on c3 is pretty good. Okay, so that was my plan. My opponent gets to move two. So he played the move bishop to g5. Okay. And now he's, he's putting pressure on all my center. He's going to take everything. And if I play pawn here, that doesn't attack his bishop. And he probably figured if he trades pieces, I won't mate him because there's no pieces. Got to have pieces to mate somebody. Okay. Now, bishop g5 does something bad that I teach in all of my classes. Bishop g5 takes a piece that's protected many times. And it moves it in my territory and unprotects it. What's protecting this bishop? Nothing. Nothing. And he's opposing my bishop. The bishops are almost attacking each other. So that means of the five knight moves that I have, one, two, three, four, five, they all attack his bishop with a chess tactic called discovered, discovered attack. Okay, now also, I'm trying to checkmate my opponent, so I'd like to take the checkmate and the discovered attack and make them one tactic. You never get to do that unless it's in a book and it's a puzzle book. In your own games, it never works. 
although it did work, so I get to lecture about it. Okay, now you'll remember when I'm checkmating my opponent and my opponent's running away, he gets to go to D2. If he had a pawn on D2, I could have checkmated him a long time ago. Queen A2 check, Queen A1 check. His king is trapped. But his king can escape via D2. I wonder what move I could make which controls D2. Let me think about that. You. Uh, knight takes E4. Knight takes E4. Hey, guess what? His king can't go to D2 anymore. Wasn't that lucky? Well, we didn't get to that yet. Okay, now I've taken a pawn, so I'm up a pawn. You agree. If he takes my knight, which gives him D2, then I can take his bishop, and then he doesn't have... No one doesn't have, he doesn't have C1. So let's say he takes my knight, and I take his bishop. I'm, I'm not a big fan of his king. I'm a big fan of it, but he's not. Now I'm threatening queen a2 checkmate. And black is ahead material. And I have an attack. Does white have an attack on my king? No. Okay, so that would be really bad. And if I wanted to, I could play a Zwischenzug, because I like saying Zwischenzug. I could play queen a2 check, and then play bishop takes g5 check. Then he would have to cry a lot. Well, I think the only way to escape checkmate is rook e3, so that his king can escape. And then after here, I'd have to get him a lot of Kleenex, because a lot of crying. Right? Okay. So he didn't play pawn takes tonight, but I'm up a pawn, I'm threatening mate, and his bishop is attacked twice. So if his name was a 2600, he would resign here. But his name was a 2100, so he fought on, right? And he played bishop takes e7. Now, when I was thinking here, hmm, what should I do? My original thought was this, this, check. Forking his king and queen. Takes, takes. Black's down two pieces, but I don't see how white's king gets out. I'm threatening queen a2 and then queen a1. So I was like, wow, I'm down two pieces, but his king looks really in trouble. And then I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to sacrifice my knight, I have checkmate right here. Then I was very pleased, because I don't want to calculate 20 moves ahead when I can calculate two moves ahead. So after knight takes e4, I knew he couldn't play bishop takes e7, but he did anyway. And then I was like, oh boy. Ow. You. Queen a2, queen c Qu slow, slow. Queen a2. King c1. And now notice he can't go to d2, remember? So I play queen a1. Now if I was white, I would take the queen and get mated. Because then the crowd's like, yay, mate. But he gave up here. Boo. Okay. And now he resigned because he's getting mated. Now, this could go in a lecture on opposite side castling because I attacked with all of my pieces. In fact, look at that. Knight, every black piece is attacking. I got, I got everything going on here. Okay. And my bishop's attacking his bishop. He never, he never moved his rook. He never moved his H and G pawns and tried to mate me. All he did was defend. No. Okay. And so that was one of my favorite games because I won. And I got to sacrifice a bishop and a queen. Usually I sacrifice nothing because then I'm down pieces. Okay. But there's something more important than a bishop and a queen. Checkmate. Checkmate the king. If you can checkmate your opponent... You can give up everything you want as long as you checkmate them. And every move, I try to move some other piece into the attack because if I'm attacking him with three, four, five, six pieces, that's difficult for him to defend. If I'm attacking him with one piece, he just stops the one piece. But I had too many pieces near his king, so he couldn't defend. 
And he played too many passive moves in the early middle game. So in this position, which is a normal position, king b1, that's not attacking me. f3, that's not attacking me. Queen f2, that's not attacking me. And probably white's already losing. I think black already has a winning position because I'm going to attack, 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 and he never attacked me at all. And one of my favorite things to do when I'm attacking a king is to get a piece on the open file without moving it. Usually, you move your rook to the open file. But the A file was open, and I didn't move my rook. So I got a free open file. Was his rook on open file? Yeah. No, horrible. Okay, so that was one of my better games. The computer said I played well, and I got to attack his king, and he didn't attack my king, so I wasn't worried. Like, oh no, I'm going to get mated. He was worried he was going to get mated. So there's some positions like this when two supercomputers are playing, and it says it's equal because it doesn't see a checkmate. But when two humans are playing, and you're attacking, 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 and your opponent's not attacking... The, the one who's attacking is going to win. A lot of times when you have three, four, five pieces attacking and your opponent's like, no, that's because you sacrificed the material. You're down a rook or you're down a knight and you're hoping to give checkmate. I didn't sacrifice anything and I was attacking the whole game. So that was fun. See, chess is fun. Except for all the noise people were making during the game outside the game. Luckily, you guys weren't there, so it wasn't you. Oh, well, maybe it was you. I think it was you at home. If you live in Atlanta, it was you. Okay, so that was the lecture on the opposite side castling <laughs> checkmate rawr game, yeah. which you missed somehow. I don't get it. But you can watch it in fast motion. Oh. Yeah. See, there you go. It's sort of like a mini Jacobian. I'll show the game again, but really fast. <laughs>